and we're back ladies and gentlemen boys and girls to let's stream Assassin's Creed 3 part 14 the bonds we break in the last episode we headed out to meet with Haytham and see if peace between Assassin and Templar was a fever dream or if it was a possibility. Connor certainly finds it his responsibility to try. But we got sidetracked with the needs of the people. First with our friend Norris and then with the people of New York. Now with three new recruits our brotherhood is complete if a bit untrained. If a bit untrained indeed. Time to go. Huh. Oh, goodness. But yes. So in today's episode, we will be exploring a bit more of the actual storyline. Um, however, we will be popping over to the Davenport Homestead to see if we can equip Connor a little bit better. Because we have unlocked the last of our artisans, Big Dave. I just have to compulsively collect this almanac page. Oh well. Okay, so we will head back to the Davenport Homestead, 
starting at the Harbor Master, we do have some trinkets to give to a good old peg leg. It's true. What you got this time? Let me see. Let me see. A veritable bounty. Shiver me timbers. That'll learn you one of these trips to be sure. I will be back for the rest. And there's only a few left. <laughs> Hendrick. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So. Let's head over here. Look at all this civilization. Connor, you, uh, yeah, my of course. Big Dave himself. Is it coming, Big Dave? You make any progress on the night? I would like to give it to Miriam soon. The steel Norris smelted is something else. I've rarely seen such fine metal. The trouble is my old tools aren't hard enough to work it. But the ones I need aren't hard to find. A shop or two in New York sell them at a good price. I'd do it myself, but with the regulars after my head, I'll stay here safe and sound if I can. I have matters to attend to in New York. I will see to it the next time I journey there. Sounds good. Both pieces of Dave's new hammer in New York. Okay. Well. It's almost as if <laughs> I can't get away from it. But that's okay, that's okay. And as uh, nice as uh, Captain Kidd's sawtooth blade is, and as nice as the Assassin Tomahawk is, I find myself wishing I had just a, some new equipment. Usually when we were dealing with Ezio, we were always getting newer and newer equipment. And you know, I'm surprised we never had an upgraded bow option. Or reinforcements for the assassin robes. You'll see that we have such a thing in um, Black Flag and in uh, Rogue, but not for Connor. Alright. You, you can. You can. Thank you. Uh, I need. Oh, we can get them both here. Yeah, the ebony hammer handle. And a hardened steel hammer head. Perfect. Now, let's just see what all we can craft. Just, just for giggles. Yeah. Franklin stove and the Lee Linden jar. Mm. Weapon blades. For a broken sword knife, huh? A boarding axe. We need some flints. English flintlock. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, let's do that. A hanger sword. Already crafted. Light cavalry saber. Uh, the naval duck foot. The royal pistol. That's nice. And the war tomahawk. Allow me to serve you. Yeah, serve me. Let me magically have what Dave has crafted me. Short range. This marvelous double-barreled pistol is a work of art. It's made of silver, gold, steel, walnut, and even fashionable whalebone. It was crafted in the Rococo style by famous gunsmith François-Alexandre Chastel. Interesting. Captain's on a warpath for that deserter. What's his name? Big Man or some such thing? Big Dave. Did in a whole unit escaping, they say. Dave's in for a rough ride, seems to me. Mm. Well, not if we can help it. that yeah, trying to bring us down and Dave's house is just down here I'm surprised that didn't Break my legs. <laughs> Connor. Here, here you are. I have the tools you requested. Ah, excellent. I'll get right to work. Norris has been hanging around pestering me about his knife. <laughs> I thought you should know I overheard some regulars talking. They are looking for you. I imagine they are. I'll have to face them sometime or another. Well, I hope he knows. He's got friends. Level 2 war supplies and consumables. Fantastic. Weapon blades. Hmm. Flints. But we already knew that. belt buckles. <laughs> nice. Ah, uh, there's always something to do, but this was, is, an episode dedicated to, uh, <laughs> the story. Oh, look at that. More stuff we need to do. Look. Not yet. Let's see what we can do. Pennsylvania, a blow for the first... Oh, well, they're almost back. So let's see where we're sitting after they're back. Then we'll be good to go. While we're here, we'll get this assassination contract taken care of.
good for us. A blow for the First Nations. Amazing. So, let's see. Pennsylvania. A patriot, a patriot mutiny. The Pennsylvania line is restless and threatening to defect to the regulars. With the new year fast approaching, the high level of drinking is a worry. Blend into the crowd and quell and, and quell and dissent before it gets out of control. So we've got three privates. Can you handle it? Possibly. Hope they can. The scarce resource. Gunpowder is in short supply for the Patriot cause, despite the militia's best efforts to seize as much as possible. Some French ships are delivering several thousand barrels over the next few weeks. Accompany the convoys and ensure they arrive at their destinations safely. Clipper. Let's have you do that. And for Connecticut. Oh, quiet Connecticut. Duncan. The first major action of the revolution is upon the colonies. Commander George Washington stood against Howe's regulars, but were, but were forced to retreat. They will be pinned against the East River, and at Howe's mercy. The war may be over before it starts. Mm. Get to Brooklyn Heights and devise a way for Washington's troops to fight another day. Let's see how well that works out. Fort George. Alternate methods. We need to know what the loyalists are planning, if we're to put an end to this. I've tried, but the soldiers themselves are told nothing now, only to await orders from above. Keep digging. Come find me when you have something worth sharing. We're so close to victory. A few more well-placed attacks and we'll be able to put an end to the civil war and be rid of the crown. What do you intend? Well, nothing at the moment, since we're completely in the dark. I thought the Templars had eyes and ears everywhere. Oh, we did. Until you started cutting them off. Your contact said orders from above. It tells us exactly what we need to do. Track down the Loyalist commanders. Man, he is fast. Connecticut. Oh, and action at Long Island. Well done. Kipps Bay, Manhattan. Things have gone from bad to worse for Washington at Kipps Bay, and the soldiers are calling off are calling for the ascension of Charles Lee. Something must be done.
you consider the proposal? I'm unconvinced. To reinforce them would leave New York exposed. It's hard enough maintaining order with our current numbers. Cut in half. Yet if we do not join with them, they risk defeat. And then what? Well, they should have come by sea. Uh, talking in circles. Full of nothing watching as we are. Then what do you propose we do? March in there and demand answers? Well, yes. Ambush! Connor? Little help here? Commander's alive, Connor. We can interrogate them. Bring them back to my quarters at Fort George and see what secrets they might share. <sighs> really? Well, you best get after him then. You go. I will watch the prisoners. No, you do it. Why me? Because I said so. Now go. Yes, you do. Come no closer. Stop him. Oh, come on. Oh. Move. Go to hell. I said move. Wait, wait. I I'll tell you anything you want. Anything, only don't make We just have some there. questions for you. Cross that threshold, and I'm a dead man. There you are, Connor. I was worried you might have gotten lost. Come along, then. Oh, dear. Oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> Tag out the target from above. Oh, well. Is this who we are, Connor? the British planning to march from Philadelphia that city's finished New York's the key they'll double our numbers push back the rebels when do they begin two days from now 
June 18th. I must warn Washington. You see? That wasn't so very difficult now, was it? I I've told you everything. Now let me go. Of course. <sighs> the other two said the same. It must be true. You killed him. You killed all of them. Why? They'd have warned the Loyalists. You could have held them until the fight was done. What? And with precious time and money on their care? What would be the point? They'd given up everything they knew. I'll meet you at Valley Forge. Yeah, we don't need to quite do that, do we? Dark times, Connor. Your father's a bad man, but we do kill people for a living in the Creed, so... What can you really say? just need one poster. That's it. I mean, really? No posters? At all. That is wild. Not a single poster to be seen.
Got you there. The guns of Ticonderoga. Henry Knox is attempting to drag the guns of Ticonderoga over the Appalachian Mountains to help lift the siege of Boston. With a little assassin ingenuity, you'll be able to help him succeed in these lofty goals. Probably. Then in New York, we can do Howe and Harlem. After a string of defeats, the Colonial Army is demoralized and afraid, but they are capable of winning the next encounter likely to occur at Harlem Heights. Howe's men are cocky and have taken up goading the Patriots. Making the rebels aware of the British mockery might be enough. Hmm, not quite. Drunks at Danbury. A regiment of British regulars has occupied Danbury. The soldiers have been drinking the town's rum stores and are threatening to burn the village. Rouse the militias in the surrounding countryside and mountain offensive. Let's go snag this piece of treasure before we leave. But it's quickly approaching. <laughs> High time to... Uh, Finish the main campaign, which is just insane to me. But at least we can make soap now. Silver rings. Shepherd's pie. Stomach ache remedy. There we go. All right, let's head back to the homestead. If nothing more than to be able to uh, get rid of these weapons. <laughs> because Miriam needs to be wooed. Because Miriam needs wooed. That means Connor's duties as wingman have not been fulfilled. Oh, the things I do for new tomahawks. Like 
Good. Keep telling yourself that. Thunder? Yes. Morris, what are you doing out here? I want to give Miriam a knife. Maybe you come with me? Of course. What is keeping you? I am nervous. I am certain she will love the blade you made for her. What am I doing? Giving a woman a knife as a gift? It's so stupid. This is something she will appreciate and use. Ugh. I made the stupid thing. I might as well give it to her. Well, Big Dave helped. But still. Come on, Romeo. Hello, Miriam. Hello, Norris. Hello, Connor. I'd love to stay and chat, but I promised Ellen a bale of furs this week, and I'm not even close to making good. I need to get out into the bush right away. Two hunters are better than one. I can help if you like. Would you? I'd be much obliged. I, uh, I bring something for you. Maybe uh, it will help. I really must get moving. I will thank you properly when I get back. Until then. <laughs> meet me at my northernmost hunting blind after you take your first skin. Yeah, who needs to hunt when they come up to you? It's so dramatic on the homestead lately. You got this clipper. The recruits were not ready for that, I'm afraid. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Not him. The time for forgiveness has passed. Please don't kill me. I'll never come back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not yet. had this blade that lick spittle might have gutted me a timely gift from Norris it would seem indeed I must make sure to thank him properly <laughs> yeah level three 
three goods. Lovely. A little sad. I could have sworn there was more to do. Well, let's see if we can make a better tomahawk. Tomahawk. Perfect. While this tomahawk is made of wood and steel, other metals such as brass, bronze, and copper were also favored to create a highly stylized head. This is a fearsome multi-purpose tool favored along the frontier by carriers of multiple origins. Whether to use as a pipe, a pipe, for war or daily tasks, this weapon's materials indicate the wielder's social status. Karen Putnam pistols, the pirate flintlock, and the Italian, the Scottish, or elsewhere, English. Hmm. Ah, the guns of Ticonderoga. Completed. going to Connecticut. Tail Jonathan Trumbull. He is one of the only governors to support the Patriot cause. There's something about his course of action that raises suspicion. Tell the governor of Connecticut and try to discern his true allegiance. Duncan and Debbie. Maybe Zanger as well. Meanwhile, in Massachusetts... Dig in. 
The British are laying siege to Boston. Civilians are in danger all over the city, and food will be in short supply before long. Help ration what there is, and protect those who can't protect themselves. Stefan and Jamie. Boarding axe. Can't do that yet. I don't want to craft it. French coat pistol. Iron ore, but we need better from lance. Got that. A poison pouch. Upgrade. Hmm. Let's see. Saddlebag. Stonehead War Club. Pine Lumber. Good. Sewing Threads. Cider. Really? Well, we'll make some more barrels then with some oak. Not the bark, but the lumber. And we'll make cider. Spirits. Alcohol. Three seventy one. Well, huh. hold on there. Spirits. Five forty three. 729. Wow. And no risk. That's amazing. It's because it's liberated. Okay. So it can't be stolen by the Templars. But it's farther away from the... I see. See if we can make any more war supplies. Horseshoes. War masts, ship sails, and swords. Toy dolls. That's adorable. Seventy five, four thirteen, two fifty, five eighty eight. Wow.
Fantastic. Oh, we've been going for a while, but it's probably time to head back to get old. We'll journey just outside, just in case something happens. And nothing happened. Okay. Well, good. Valley Forge shortly. Monsieur Connor, a pleasure as always. What brings you? I wanted to ask you something. Why is this revolution so important to you? Hmm. Since I decided to embark upon this adventure, through all the lords and merchants and soldiers I've spoken to, you are the first to ask me this. Have you ever been to France? I have not. One day, when all of this is over, I will invite you to Paris to stay with me and my family. She is the most beautiful city in all the world, Connor. Full of art and culture, women and wine. But she is sick on the inside. Black and rotting. But here, here is something quite different. On the outside, the colonies are dirty and dangerous, unforgiving and uncivilized. But on the inside, they glow. And that is why I am here, to learn. I want to return home, able to touch Francis Blackheart, and make it glow once more. That's inspiring, actually. And I wonder why Connor didn't show up in Unity. Hmm. Curious, sir, and curious, sir. But we're here to warn the commander. We should be sharing what we know with Lee, not Washington. You seem to think I favor him. But my enemy is a notion, not a nation. It is wrong to compel obedience, whether to the British crown or the Templar cross. And I hope in time the loyalists will see this too, for they are also victims. You oppose tyranny, injustice. These are just symptoms. Their true cause is human weakness. Why do you think I keep on trying to show you the error of your way? You have said much, yes. But you have shown me nothing. Then we'll have to remedy that, then, won't we? <laughs> Sir. Hello, Connor. What brings you here? The British have recalled their men in Philadelphia. They march for New York. Very well. I'll move our forces to Monmouth. 
If we can rout them, we'll have finally turned the tide. And what's this? Private correspondent. Oh, of course it is. Would you like to know what it says, Connor? It seems your good friend here has just ordered an attack on your village. Although attack might be putting it mildly. Oh, tell him, Commander. We've been receiving reports of allied natives working with the British. I've asked my men to put a stop to it. By burning their villages and salting the land, by calling for their extermination, according to this letter. Not the first time, either. Tell them what you did 14 years ago. That was another time. The Seven Years' War. And so now you see what happens to this great man when under duress. He makes excuses, displaces blame, does a great many things, in fact, except take responsibility! No! Who did what and why must wait? My people come first. Then let's be off. No. You and I are finished. Son, do you think me so soft that by calling me son, I might change my mind? How long did you sit on this information, or am I to believe you discovered it now? My mother's blood may stain another's hand, but Charles Lee is no less a monster, and all he does, he does by your command. A warning to you both. Choose to follow me or oppose me, and I will kill you. Sullivan expedition. <laughs> of course. Don't touch the ground. Should make sure the village is safe. Yes, we should. Uh. 
And it says the clan mother, but this is Connor's grandmother. The cat can in Kahaka.
defend my what? They don't let Connor rest, do they? <laughs> that was a straight up werewolf's howl. Did you not hear that? Oh my gosh. to Hoko. Hoko. Our friend. Our childhood friend. Conan Dogo. Conan Dogo. It, it's, that's just such a oh, a horrible thing to happen to somebody who just wanted good. I mean, really. That's one of the the most like depressing parts about that whole thing is that uh, you know as people change and as you know things get more complicated. Uh, there's a quote actually from uh, Game of Thrones, Jon Snow, um, that actually sums that up pretty good. You know. Uh, When all people do is lie to each other, you know, you never get to the truth. There are only better and better lies. So, what what's happened here? I mean, the assassins and the Templars, you know, they've been warring for ever. And two extraordinary factions that, while they fight for humankind, they fight for them differently. And you, you gotta wonder, you know, on the one hand, mankind has proven over and over again to be horribly selfish base and against their own interests. But shouldn't we be free to make those mistakes? All right. I am hurrying to help defend the convoy, I promise. Yeah. 
Is this not my convoy? Man, that's going to be depressing. That's... That's horribly depressing. Templar Fort. Good, good, good. All right, so Pennsylvania's ours. 25%. So how in Harlem? And here we have Lift the Siege. Henry Knox managed to bring the guns of Ticonderoga to George Chester Heights with the help of the assassins. With a formidable battery in place on high ground, it's only a matter of time before General Howe realizes General Howe realizes his position is untenable. Help expedite the process. Stefan Chaffeau. Yeah. And down in Connecticut. Culper Ring in New Haven. Lieutenant General Sir Henry Clinton of the Regulars is trying to draw General Washington into open conflict. Washington knows such a maneuver would spell certain doom for his tenuous army, army and is relying on the efforts of his Culper Ring to keep his movement secret. Meet some of the Culper Ring spies in New Haven and escort them to West Point. Clipper, you're on it. for as long as it takes. If the enemy is allowed to push through, we will lose what precious little ground we have gained. The sacrifices your brothers have made today must not have been in vain. Now go! Bring the fight to our enemy! Make them rule the day they marched upon us! Yeah, well, that's lucky. We can feed the troops now. All right. De Lafayette. Connor, my friend. You have arrived just in time to bear witness to our glorious victory. Where is Charles Lee? That batard. He shows up in the middle of our preparations and just takes charge. Screams at everyone to advance and then rides away. I am left to pick up the pieces. They come from. Stand toward 
it! We are falling back! Everyone, to me! Now! Now! I will hold the area while you bring them to safety. I grant you my finest soldiers to serve as your personal guard. There is nothing they will not do to ensure you are victorious. Bonne chance, mon ami. Bon chance. All right. Yeah, you sure hope, wouldn't you? Ammunition, sir, and the enemy advances. Then we need to pull back, rejoin the others, and cover their escape. Oh, no.
I see you. Well done, my friend. You have saved many lives today. Yeah. Connor? Charles Lee has betrayed you. He forced retreat in the midst of battle, hoping the loss would take the lives of your men and see you relieved of your command. What? I'm sure he will come and spin a tale saying that he was outnumbered or I was somehow to blame. All lies. I will say it one last time. That man is your enemy and he will not stop until you are dead or dishonor. Connor's tale rings true. Lee was acting most odd upon the battlefield. I will investigate these allegations at once. The time for that is long past. This must be done properly, else we're no better than those we oppose. Never mind the political ramifications of such an act. Should you uh, choose politics. to Lee's life? Then I will take it myself. Enjoy your victory, Commander. It will be the last I deliver you. Uh. Boom. Which means we are now free to uh, do the Benedict Arnold DLC. But something tells me we have things to do in the present day. Something's happened, Desmond. Abstergo has your dad. Where? Italy. Same place they were holding you. What are you two waiting for? Let's go. There's more. Hello again, Mr. Miles. I hope this message finds you well, or as well as it can, all things considered. It appears we now each have something the other desires. I propose a trade. Bring me the apple, and I'll return your father to you no worse for the wear. Should you refuse, he will still be returned, albeit much worse for the wear. I assume you'd like to avoid an unpleasant outcome. I always knew it would come to this, just not so soon. I wonder if Abstergo even knows what's about to happen. And has this been a part of their plan all along? Maybe they want the world to end, to see it all burned away. Then they'd have their new world, ripe for the reshaping. We talked about looking for another power source, leaving him there. It's probably what he'd want, for us to finish the mission. But I can't. It's hard enough taking a life, but letting one be taken, knowing there was something I could do about it, not a chance. It might be I'm risking my life, risking all our lives to save an asshole. But what else am I supposed to do? That asshole is my dad. Preach, Desmond, preach. <laughs> yeah, we'll get through this modern day mission, then we'll cut the recording for today. They know I'm here, Rebecca. There's no way they don't. Bitch, this is a bad idea. Huh. Oh, I see. Hand over your weapons and come with me, sir. I can show myself in, but thanks for the offer. 
I'd rather this not turn ugly, Mr. Miles. Then let me through. Subdue the subject, please. Yeah, the subject. Okay. Fourth floor. Well, so you've learned absolutely nothing since you left us. Walking into an elevator in the middle of a hostile environment. Really? <laughs> Where's my father? <laughs> You'll see him soon enough. Now be a good boy and wait for security inspection. You're gonna have to climb. Yeah. I'd say probably not. Gotta love it. You know, we can't be ever since. <laughs> ever since Brotherhood, they've been training a particular. been training a particular member of Absurgo, and it's the, uh, the, really the in-game player character for the, uh, multiplayer. That's no longer a thing, but they're here, or if they're not here, they're on a mission after their training was complete. But we'll learn more about them soon. and you're still running around with only a tiny knife for protection? <laughs> Stupid. All right, Desmond. Game's over. Not now. Not now. Dinya is still stuck for water. Yes. Get out! What the hell was that?
Oh, I got you now. Where are you, Daniel? Those are the calmest civilians I've ever seen. Come on, Daniel, where are you at? There he is. Weird to think that Desmond's left-handed. better. All right. This has been a long time coming, Vidic. Dad? Not so fast, Mr. Miles. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm the one calling the shots. Now, Give me the apple. You want it? Fine. Here it is. Wait! No! Ah! 
That's no joke. That's terrifying. You never should have come here. You put everything on the line for what? So you could rescue your father? Yeah. That's awesome. Desmond Miles. Great, great protagonist. I like William too. it. I'd get the power source hooked up before heading back into the Animus. But it's your call. Absolutely. <laughs> wonder if we have any new emails. Subject, subject 16. His name was Clay. Sorry, didn't Clay say Washington was a Templar? No. He indicated that Washington came into contact with an Apple of Eden, but beyond that, it's all speculation. And furthermore, judging from the portrait referenced by Clay, the event occurred much later in Washington's life. Perhaps hey, Desmond, wasn't even involved. didn't Subject 16... Sure. Sorry, didn't Clay say Washington was a Templar? No. He indicated Whoa. that Washington came into contact with an Apple of Eden, but beyond that, it's all speculation. And furthermore, judging from the portrait referenced by Clay, the event occurred much later in Washington's life. Perhaps Connor wasn't even involved. It's very hard to know for sure. We just have to wait and see what, if anything, happened. Good point. So what was it like being back at Abstergo? I didn't expect to get out of there alive. It's a good thing Cross broke down the way he did. If he wasn't losing his mind, I'd probably be dead. I guess he never really recovered. What do you mean? When he first came to us, he was exhibiting symptoms of the bleeding effect. It was real bad. He'd just go in and out at a moment's notice. No animus required. Got a little violent, too, sometimes. It took a while and a bunch of therapy, but we thought we had it under control. Once he went back over to Abstergo, though, who knows what they did to him. I still worry about that happening to me. He was raised in an animus, Desmond. There's overexposure, and then there's Daniel. Poor guy. That could never happen to you. We won't let it. And when this is all over, we should take a trip somewhere. Celebratory vacation. Yeah. That sounds nice. I'll listen to you. Italy, Brazil, and the United States, all in the span of a few weeks. And you're complaining about not getting out enough? Seriously, Sean? No, not seriously. Are you mad? Trust me, no one wants time off more than I do, right? Do you have any idea how hard it is to crank those database entries out as fast as I do? You got a point. The sooner we're done here, the sooner we can take that vacation. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if there's any more emails. You're kind. Uh, you are animals. Okay. Don't worry. We've done that one. The ones you named Minerva and Tinia. They called you here, and then they left. Don't you find it odd that they would go through all the trouble and then just disappear? There were discs here once. I threw them into the abyss when I still could. I think they were meant for you, filled with lies. You don't need such things. I alone will guide you. Oh, you don't trust me. I am the enemy. I bade you kill the traitor. But if you hadn't, you would have died, and the world as well. I hate you. But you will save us. So I offer my hand. I will lead you to salvation. December the 11th. I'm sorry. They're going to be here soon. Trapped me in this damn museum. Should have taken more precautions. I'm sorry, son. It wasn't fair to me to come down on you the way I did. You never asked for any of this, and I should have been more understanding. 
I hope you can forgive me. I love you. Pluck at my heartstrings, Bill. Oh. All right, Sean. Let's see. I regret not asking you to hack into the Abstergo servers while you were there. A couple of well-placed relays and we'd be swimming in information. We have everything we need. Yeah, except the key. We're close. How do you know? I just do. I've been poking around a bit. Did you know there are machines down here that make, well, mana? Wizard mana or biblical mana? What do you think? Biblical, of course. The Greeks called it ambrosia. The Indians, amrit or soma. Most cultures around the world refer to a divine food, though I'd say its taste is anything but. You ate something that came out of a 75,000-year-old machine. And I live to tell the tale. So? What did it taste like? Cardboard. Taste of cardboard. Hardly the stuff of legends, though. I wonder if the first civilization didn't taste differently than we do. Maybe the flavorizer <laughs> broke. Flavorizer? You certainly got away <laughs> with words, Rebecca. Things are getting worse outside. What do you mean? Every day for the past two weeks, the sun has been throwing off larger and larger flares. Older satellites are starting to malfunction. I hear rumblings of recalling the crew on the International Space Station. There's already work being done as well to shield power stations and transformers on the ground. Not that any of it matters. This goes far beyond some brownouts. We all saw what's actually coming. Do you know how it works? Look, I'm no physicist, but it, it's something to do with the Earth's geomagnetic field. Flares, mass ejections disturb it, which appears to trigger seismic events. I've tried reaching out to people who might know better, but they all insist it's bump. And I don't blame them. It sounds ridiculous. I wish it was. Best we finish up with Connor. Probably. But where is William Miles? There he is. Hello. Hey. Do you think killing Vidic set up Sturgo back? I doubt it. I'm sure he pioneered the Animus. But they've had the technology for decades now. Plenty of other people can take his place. And Cross? Oh, he was a loose cannon. I doubt anyone's mourning his death. I think these days he was more a symbol than an asset. Hmm. I'm sorry, I don't mean to dismiss what you did. But it's going to take a lot more than a couple of deaths to stop the Templars. Did Vidic put you in an animus when you read of Sturgo? They'd be able to search your memories and track you back here. Oh, they definitely tried, but I made things difficult for them. You can resist and cloud up the transmission or just refuse to move. Eventually, they would have gotten what they needed, but it still would have taken them weeks. Vidic threatened to put me in a coma once. It would have made you more pliable. But if the user isn't engaged, it's a mess. I know they've been working on ways to extract memories and let others sift through those memories. Maybe they're even analyzing mine right now. Maybe they'll find us. I don't know. What I do know is that we've got to get through that door. Yeah. I should probably get back into the Animus. Hey. So, um, when this is over, and assuming it all works out, I was hoping I could, you know, come home. I'd like nothing more. But what is home? We're almost there, son. All right, one more battery. Then we'll cut that. Then we'll cut the episode for here. We might finish the story in the next episode. Wouldn't that be something? Okay. Oh, I see. Definitely one of the cooler hubs that we have access to. A new world approached. One that was dark and cold. It would consume us. 
For we were flesh, and flesh is frail. Though suits and shields might offer comfort, such adornments would not suffice, not to save us all. So we sought to change what we were. In this manner, we might thrive in a world made poisonous. It was Aita who volunteered to see if it might be done. Aita, my husband, my love. In the end, it changed him, ruined him. He was made a prisoner of the machines. The body might survive, but his mind became brittle to the touch. He begged me for release, for days, for weeks, for months. I pleaded with him to give us time to find another way. But there wasn't one. Not for him. Not for us. That's disrespect. Oh my gosh. but a series of electrical impulses and the body a vessel to hold these sparks but it is weak in time it decays and crumbles into dust we asked ourselves then what if it might be replaced with something stronger something better so we forged a new vessel, one that might endure. It proved easy enough to enter. But to leave, to leave required something more, something wrong. And so this too they abandoned. I wondered. Were they right to turn away? Artificial bodies. We're getting into the matrix here. Oh. Surely there's a way out. Okay, I'll just go back up real quick. <laughs> Been a while since we've done a full two hour episode. Though, with so much plot, you know, it's probably a whole lot more interesting than uh, some of the other two-hour long ones, like hunting and flag hunting from the other games.
last battery. Now, they only needed the key, which is with Connor, which leads us back to the Animus. All right, and that is going to be it for part 14 here on the channel. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. It was a long one, but it was a good one, I think. We got William back, and the last obstacle lies in the key. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. If you're not already, please follow me on Twitch if you prefer to watch live, Jeff the Narrator 469, or if you'd like to watch all at once or in a marathon style, you can always catch me on YouTube at Jeff the Narrator. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in today, or if you watch later on, and we might have one more episode to record today. When I say today, I mean I'm recording this on the 26th of December, 2022. I think I've got one more in me. One more might finish the story. But we may take a couple parts, part 15 and 16, to do more homestead missions, side objectives, Captain Kid stuff, just depending on what is available to us. Because I definitely want to have the majority of it finished before we finish up with Connor. But, because we're going to be doing The Tyranny of King Washington, um, having a couple of post-campaign parts before we move on to the DLC wouldn't be the end of the world. But, until then, with William judging us, Sean getting it into my shot, keep telling stories. <laughs>